Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Romanian District Mathematical Olympiad for 9th graders 2001, problem number 4. We wish to find, uh, also it's slightly rephrased, in the original problem statement it was divided into 3 separate tasks, but to keep it simple, we wish to find all functions f from the set of integers unto itself, satisfying this functional equation f of x squared plus f of y equals f squared of x plus y for all integers x and y. Here are my hints for this problem. First, set x to be 0 and justify that our function must be bijective. Then, suppose that, uh, well, since it is bijective, then it has a 0, only one 0 in fact. So suppose that f of x 0 equals 0 and set x to be x 0 and change y to be f of y, to show that, in fact, x0 must be 0. Then, set x to be 1, and j to be, and y to be 0, to show that f of 1 equals 1, and then proceed by induction, show that f of x plus 1 equals f of x plus 1, and use induction to find the general form of the solution. So give this problem a try, and I will see you in just a minute. All right, so first of all, let's call this condition asterisk and let's start with setting. Let's set x to be zero in our condition asterisk. What then? Notice that then uh, we have f of f of y equals uh, f squared of 0 plus y. And let's take a look at the right hand side. This function, which takes integer y and maps it to f squared of 0 plus y, well, it's a linear function. It's an affine function. Uh, and it's pretty easy to see that it is bijective. Well, and since this is bijective, we know that the inner function, which is f, f must be injective, and the outer function, well, which is also f, must be surjective, which combined means that f itself must be bijective. And also, let's call this condition which we have derived triangle. All right, now let, uh, so suppose, suppose, now that f of x zero equals zero for some integer x zero. Well, for sure such a number exists because our function is bijective. All right, and now let's set x to be x0 and let's change let's change y f of y in our condition asterisk what then oh let's take a look then we have f of x0 squared plus instead of f of y this time we have f of f of y and on the right hand side we have f squared of x0 instead of y we have f of y all right and now let's take a look what happens first of all since we assume that f of x0 is 0 this part disappears because it's 0 and what's more what is f of f of y by our condition triangle, f of f of y, f of f of y can be replaced by f squared of 0 plus y. All right, but moreover, let's see something else. So maybe, you know what, maybe let's not do everything at the same time. f of x 0 squared plus f squared of 0 plus y equals f of y. 
All right, now our function is injective, so we can cancel this outer occurrence of our function f. So by injectivity, we have this equation. Let's write a comment by injectivity. All right. Now y disappears and we see that x0 squared plus f squared of 0 equals 0. And now we know, since we are dealing with real numbers, well, both of these numbers must be 0. In particular, this already implies that x0 equals 0. All right. All right. So our condition triangle has become we're following f of f of y equals y. So our function is involution. All right, let's go back to our original functional equation. And let's now set something else. Let's now set x to be 1 and y to be 0. So set x to be 1 and y to be 0 in our condition asterisk. What then? Then we have f of 1 squared, but it's 1, so f of this plus f of 0 equals, and on the right hand side we have f squared of 1 plus 0. Now let's notice something, f of 0 we have established since x0 is 0, it means that f of 0 is 0. So we have f of 1 equals f squared of 1. And now let's take a look. We know that f of 1 is not 0 because our function is bijective and it's 0 for other argument. So since f of since f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is not 0 by injectivity. So we can divide by f of 1 again and we get 1 equals f of 1. All right. And now let's set finally, finally, let's set, uh, now let's set just x to be 1 in our condition asterisk. Then, then we have the following equation, f of 1 plus f of y equals uh, f squared of 1 plus y, all right? Now, what do we see? And also, you know what? Let's also change. Let's also change y to f of y in our condition asterisk. So uh, instead of f of y, I will have, you know what? Let's rewrite it to be clear. So we have f of 1 plus f of f of y equals y f squared of 1 plus uh, f of y. All right. Now let's see what happens. By our condition triangle, this f of f of y is just y by triangle. So, and f of 1, as we know it, f of 1 is 1. So we have this, and I will write it in a different color, and I will put quantifier. For every integer y, for every integer y, f of 1 plus y equals 1 plus f of y. And now we can do easy induction. I will leave the details to you because... Well, it's pretty easy to see what's happening. By induction, 
you will be able to derive the following fact that for every integer y, f of y equals y. How do I know it? Well, let's think about it. For example, f of 0, we know it's 0. f of 1 is 1. Then, for example, f of 2 is 1 plus f of 1. So it's 1 plus 1, 2. f of 3 is 1 plus f of 2. So it's 3. And in the other direction, f of minus 1, for example. f of minus 1 is 1. Sorry. f of minus 1. f of minus 1 equals... Uh, f of minus 1 plus 1 equals f of 0, which is 0. So f, f of minus 1 equals minus 1. And you probably see what's happening. So we have only one candidate for solution. And now let's do easy verification in the end. Let's do verification. So let's compare the left-hand side and the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we have f of f of x squared plus f of y. So it's, well, x squared plus y, of course. And on the right-hand side, we have f squared of x plus y. And of course, it's the same. So we have exactly one solution. The only solution the only solution f equals the identity function of integers. And that closes our problem. So pretty nice problem, I'd say. By the way, in the original problem statement, it was divided into three parts or in part A. Uh, it was required to show that f of 0 was 0, in part b, that f of 1 is 1, and for part c, that f of y equals y. So, um, the idea was to... a and b leads to c, but whatever. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've, I hope that you've learned something new this time. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.